Welcome to the LFG 1904 Show. My name is Graf. Dustin here. Kyle Ives. Cody Ives. And I'm kicking wing. That's Yee-hoo! right. Yeah, that was a party. God damn. Welcome back. Last year, we had Panama Red, kicking wing, and Kyle on. This year, we are graced with the presence of the other brother. That's yeah, right. Man. Fucking A, dude. We've got the one and only rare Bigfoot in here right now. Damn. Is it a rare appearance? Uh, I like to come out every now and again. Okay. All, All right. right. Here, I'm going to get wing that this mic whenever he needs it. I need you to speak directly in that one so we don't All lose right. the audio quality. All right. There we go. Fucking A, boys. Where you been this year? Man. Uh, so we... Uh, well, we started the year off in Toronto, Canada Damn. Uh, in January and then bounced around from Toronto to Florida, uh, hit a couple spots in Florida. Shot out uh, to Arizona, Arizona back. Did we? Yeah, we went to Phoenix. Oh, yeah, Before that's right. Phoenix we did, uh, what was that, uh, Chandler, um, Choo 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 Choo, Smoky Desert, Harley Davidson. Wait, Desert Wing, Wind. Wing Desert is from Wind. Arizona. Yeah, Desert Wind, Harley Davidson. Harley dealer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, in Arizona, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, someplace just another red. one of them. Yeah, it was just hot. It was real fucking hot. Uh, was it uh, Arizona Bike Week that y'all were out there for? We, we were did. out there the weekend before Arizona Bike Week. Damn. Yeah, it was like a, yeah, free, was like a, free, was a party. free party. Damn. Did y'all go to the Bisbee or uh, to Naco again? Uh, I So I have. I've been there this couple times this year. This uh, year we showed up a day late. Oh, yeah. for the Prowl? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, we missed yeah, it. It was definitely a bummer. I, I, n- I haven't gotten to go yet, so. I haven't been yet either, but last year... Fucking Wing told us all about it, and it f- sounds so fucking awesome. And everybody, all the Chopper dudes I know are like, dude, the brow is so fucking sick. Dude, it really is. It's such a one-of-a-kind show. Kick and Wing invited us to come out and be a part of it last year. Um, made it happen. We did the wall there last year, and like we said last year on the podcast, dude, it was such a good event. And uh, had a lot of fun. Um, it was just the timing was a little off. We were, s- we were tied up in Florida, like – three days before it started so um we hauled ass we tried to make it out there which we had to be in arizona anyways um for that phoenix harley dealer and um but yeah we we got there on monday (laughs) just (laughs) monday after 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 all the dust settled you know so uh, well like we were talking in the parking lot we've been going through a little bit of like semi-truck issues because we both got both trucks on the road this year so Every time one truck gets fixed, the other one breaks down. And then when, as soon as you get done fixing the other truck, the other truck breaks down. And now both of them are sitting here in San Diego parking lot. And as we've been setting up the wall, we've been fixing the trucks at the same time. Oh wow. So you became a diesel mechanic at the same time. A little bit of everything, <laughs> yeah. Literally, I walked right. up on Cody and I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm just airing it out because I got to get to this relay. And I don't want it to blow up in my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't like it. I don't, I'm under. Yeah, wait, I don't like p- taking parts of a part that got like 125 pounds of pressure behind it. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> just not conducive to my livelihood. I'm just exploding on me. So. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I, I pulled up to drop off the shirts and both truck hoods are up. And I'm like, I don't like that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not good. But it is dope that you got both rigs out here. I'm sure it makes fucking living quarters a little nicer. Yeah. I mean, we try to get hotels everywhere we go anyways, but it, it's definitely nicer while we're traveling down the road. We got a little room. We've got Cody's got his son with him. I've got my uh, son and daughter with me. Um, gives the kids a little room to run around while we're traveling. They can watch TV and play video games and do whatever, uh, bathrooms and stuff. So, yeah, it's dope. Um, it's my dream. It is. You guys are living my dream. That's fucking rad. Your <laughs> kids in a fucking goddamn diesel pusher going to town to town Dude, doing that's, a show. That's what, uh, Seriously. that's what we live on, man. That's why yeah. we live this lifestyle. We get to create our own schedule and, you know, pave our own path and basically make up our own rules and, and, do do all of this for us you know what i mean but also at the same time we take care of people along the way and mm. and just uh you know we're out here to be the best piece of people we possibly can be you know yeah a thousand percent and this year was the first time you, you brought your boy along his born free yeah, was his so first show is, so this is the first year that my son's gotten to like leave the state with me and and go places with me and then i took him to born free so that was his very first event that he got to go to as well as his very first time ever watching me ride fuck how did that way. feel is he was he in the middle or was he on the rail? I let him watch the first show up top so he can kind of see like what was going on, and then the second show we brought him in so he can kind of feel the energy of like how we feel and <sighs> stuff, and he just mind blown. And by like the second show, um, our brother's up there collecting twenties, throwing shirts, collecting twenties, throwing shirts, and he has to come down and grab the shirts from me. And it wasn't until like I was passing five or six shirts that I'm looking over to my right and I noticed that it's actually my son balling the shirts up. Mm. And 
he's passing the shirts to me as how I'm passing them to Kyle. So he's already getting pre-balled up and everything, and I wasn't even paying attention to that. And it's crazy for – he's seven years old, never been to a show, but all of a sudden, first show, it's like he just fit. Like It's in his blood. It's, it's in, in his, his blood. blood. Yeah, 100%. He, he knows the deal. Yeah. He's yeah. fucking getting to Damn, it. Damn, dude. It I know that cool. feeling, and that was too. A, and that was, like, the greatest feeling, getting to look down, and he's just looking at me like I'm his biggest hero. Like, that was yeah. just amazing. Fuck, I just got goosebumps. Paid, dude. paid a that. lot of money to get that feeling. <laughs> 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 Hey, yeah. it's cheaper to keep her. Yeah, damn. damn. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but uh, there, at some point you're riding, you know, did you get to catch his face and it's like slow motion burned in your face like, that's my daddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, what yeah. about you? I know you've had that feeling too a couple times now. Dude, so actually, uh, what, like two months ago, my son was with me or, you know, both of my kids were with me and um, we were in Atlanta, Georgia, and and it was like one of the last last shows of the event. Um and he just walked up like right before the show started and he was like yo i want to do this show with you and i was like yeah i mean that'd be cool you know we'll make it happen and stuff and he's like no like i want to do this show with you this one like this this show you're about to do right now i want to i want to ride in there and i was like well man i don't know like that's that's <laughs> not, 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 not really how hey, this works yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i don't think you're getting it dad yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm riding the wall. Dude, yeah. and that's exactly the approach he took, bro. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, if you want to, I mean, do you think you can? And he's like, yes. And I was like, I mean, you look like you have the confidence and stuff, you know. And, and me inside, I was like low-key low, low key freaking out because I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen, you know. And, you know, you just got to put this trust into him and be like, man, I hope I hope you got it. You know, <laughs> like, I've spent this much time preparing you for it. So now I, now is the time where we find out if you got it or not. And, and he uh, did. He went in there and. Killed it. Yeah. Did he really? Yeah, dude. Yeah. I had never seen him ride. He had never rode on the wall before, ever. What? He just hopped up on it like he'd been What did he hop on? The Hummer? No, no we, we, we got, got some, sponsored uh, by uh, Zoo's Electric Bicycles this year. Yeah, we did the hand-built show in Texas, and Zoo sponsored the event and did, like, a whole display. And uh, throughout the event, we were walking from our Airbnb to the event, which is, like, three miles <laughs> through Austin. And well, we were really lime scootering it. But well, by, <laughs> yeah. by the second day, we all started lime scootering. By the third day, when the event's just about to start and Zeus showed up, we were like, hey, we need those bikes. Come here, buddy. And so <laughs> we did. We told them, like, you guys can get in the wall, try it out, do whatever you want to do. They brought, like, five of their employees come over. Every one of them ate shit. And then the bike they ate shit on, I took home. Nice. Damn. So... <laughs> Yeah, That's that solid works. as fuck. Yeah. And they, th- they and were I, probably big dick and I, Dude, and I got <laughs> a <laughs> brand new one. Yeah, and I put <laughs> and I, uh, <laughs> So I rode that I rode that bike on the wall every single show while we were at the hand built show to show them that we could do that. And uh by the end of the event they ended up just giving us both of the bikes. So they meet us up in Sturgis, give us a few more. And so uh every other show I've been putting it up on the wall, showing people that you can ride these e bikes on the wall and they're dope. I mean they they stand up to the abuse that we've been putting them through and so all of a sudden, my little nephew in Atlanta, like he said, just decided I want to ride that bike on the wall. So he goes in there, crowd pumps him up. He gets on the tracks, rides the tracks, puts the front tire on the wall, brings it back down. Crowd goes crazy. He's pumped. <laughs> Damn. And then he's, and he's then pumped. didn't do it again. And then oh, he was yeah, like, "I'm good." He said, "One and done." Later, Dad. Yeah, last day. <laughs> last day of born free. Same thing. He goes, "Oh yeah, I'm doing it." <laughs> and he did this time he got both tires on the front and back on the wall this time and then came right back down to the tracks put it down and it was just like yep still got it <laughs> <laughs> i'm the man around here ask <laughs> right? about me yeah damn dude that's so fucking wild that y'all are gonna have how does your dad feel about all that dude uh, he, i think he's just kind of sitting in this spot now where he's like he can't believe how fast all this has happened and and you know it's just the next generation coming in to play and yeah, you I mean, know. our dad was in the circus industry his whole life, so then watching us grow up in it, that was a humbling feeling. And now all of a sudden your grandkids are growing up, and they're wanting to do it. So he feels like everything that he put into all the hard work that he did throughout the years is finally paying off to where he can have his generations just continue to do you know, what he loved to do and made it easier for them to do it so that he, they didn't have to work as hard as he had to work. So he's uh, he's definitely loving the feeling as well. Especially with y'all being where you're at age wise, because you're 32, 29. You're 29, yeah. and you're 32. I'll be 31 uh, and 20 days. Damn. So y'all, y'all still got plenty of time of riding. Meanwhile, in five years, both kids will be 12, and you could put it, if they. And I feel like this is another thing. Y'all aren't pressuring either of the boys to no, do this. Not at all. 
Not at all. No, they're just naturally wanting to do this. Be a part of the and family get down. I yeah. think that's what's so cool about it for my son. It's like I stress to him. I'm like, yo, you don't have to do this shit. You know, like one, he's a genius. You know, he's like excellent in school, kills it, super smart, dude. He's super talented with sports. He plays soccer really good. He plays basketball really good. Um, he's got potential. You know what I mean? To, to do something great. And, uh, but also at the same time, I'm thankful for the life that we've lived and, you know, been able to learn things the way that we learned and experience things the way that we've got to experience. Like instead of reading it in a book, we were actually there physically mm. hands on, you know. Um, so I think it's important to travel the world, but also at the same time, I'm cool with him being a rocket scientist or whatever, you know, whatever he wants to do. And um and so I, I do, I tell him, I'm like, yo, you don't have to do this. Like, you don't, you don't have to ride a motorcycle inside of a barrel or a ball or anything. Like, if you want to do it, that's cool. I'll let you do it. I'll support it. And, um, but right now we're focused on school and, and, you know, doing, doing the right thing. And, and, uh, just naturally both of them, I think are just like, yeah, we don't give a shit. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was about to say, it sounds like that it's already out. Like, yeah. they're, they're doing it for sure. Yeah, for yeah, sure. They, yeah. they took it as the more you tell me no, the more I want to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is no. why I've yeah. never been like, yo, no, you're not doing it. No, you're not doing it. I've just kind of just been that neutral zone, yeah, like, you know? like I'm not going to be upset if you don't. If he asks, yeah, if he asks me the question, I'm like, I'm not going to give him a yes. I'm not going to give him a no. I'm just going to give him, like, a long speech of, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, <laughs> probably not. This is what it's if like. If you want to, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. I know you're going to do it, but if you're going to do it, do it this way. Yeah, and don't yeah. suck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't Whatever suck. you do, don't <laughs> suck, okay? Yeah. Yep. You are fucking an Ives. Do not fuck this up, okay? <laughs> yeah. We've got a brand. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Dude, so growing up for you, Cody, uh, we got we got Kyle's stories. What were some, like, key moments growing up with a dad who was a traveling man? What When when did you know that this was for you? Um. To be honest, I don't really know. It's just uh, my dad, I don't know how much Kyle got into it, but, like, we lived in Germany for a little bit with my dad on a show over there, and then shortly after he retired, and we went to public school. And then when we come home from public school one day, all of a sudden that steel ball is just set up in the backyard because he missed it. And uh, before they would get home from work, we would get in there with, like, our cousins, all the neighborhood kids. Next thing you know, there'd be seven or eight of us in there on a pedal bike pedaling around inside this globe. And... uh one day they came home from work early one day, called us all. Mom's yelling at us. Dad's like, nah, let him be. And he watched us for a little bit. My eighth birthday was coming up. Dad got me a little XR70 for my eighth birthday and uh, kind of just took off with it. And uh, my dad used to, when we were kids in Germany, he'd put us on the gas tank and just spin us around on the, on the, the bottom. So it was like we kind of already knew what to expect. And then when he finally put us on dirt bikes ourselves, it was yeah. yeah, it was natural. Seat time. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, it was just matter of seat time and that crashed a little bit and then <laughs> Yeah, eight know, years old, that's when you first start doing the ball. Yeah, start fucking and nuts. then uh by the Jesus. time I was nine we went on the, the road with a circus and I traveled a few a few years in a circus and then uh got picked up by doing Harley Davidson dealerships and uh like Laconia Bike Week, we do all those festivals and Sturgis, Daytona, Daytona. and uh started hitting all the big bike weeks and that turned into uh to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Before you know it, we were out in Sturgis. My dad and I had a crash, and uh, he broke the chain, went upside down, and it landed at the bottom of the globe, and I came back around and hit him, and I put the handlebars through his chest. Oh, fuck. And oh. So he broke his rib, collapsed the lung, spent some time in the hospital. Once he bounced back after that, he was just like, I'm getting too old for this. I can't ride anymore. And then that's when it became the Ives Brothers. And Damn, then my wow. brother and I started riding together. and you know, But even after... I don't know, when I was around, like, nine years old and started doing shows and that spotlight started hitting you, and then it was like, you know, I can make this work. I oh, can, yeah. I can do this. <laughs> I like this. Yeah, I like it, yeah. And this is before Kyle even started riding, too. So Kyle kind of grew up watching me get to do all of that fun stuff, and then eventually – He's I want some. <laughs> yeah, he started, and then it was a, then I it was a battle. Him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we Get go. Him. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was a battle from there on out. I love I that. Know. Do y'all not do the ball as much? It, I feel like y'all travel more doing the wall. So I got a bolt home after here. Um, that's what we were talking about it today at lunch. Uh, it's like a, I don't know, 28-hour drive home. <sighs> so I'm going to take one of the trucks, bolt home from here. He's going to take the other truck to Milwaukee. We got to go grab the ball, and then we'll go back to Milwaukee with it. So we don't do it as much, but we still uh, we still do it quite a bit, three or four times a year. Okay, that's Ooh. not so bad. So, 
Because I've never seen y'all do the ball. What do you prefer, the ball or the wall? The wall, for sure. I mean, the globe I've done for 22 years <laughs> yeah, now. So. I'm over it. Yeah, I'm just uh, – It's you can only do so much in it. Um, and it's one of those things that as you're riding in it, somebody can stand on the other side of the parking lot and watch you. And, you know, you don't feel that energy. But the wall, people have to come to you. So when you they're up top – feel the presence in the yeah, wall. When you're up top, then – you know, you have to come watch our show, so you're coming to us. And Dude, that is the other thing, being inside the wall versus being on the railing. The railing is dope as fuck. She's, my lady got a sick-ass video of me last year throwing a 20 out, but the being inside of it, the music is fucking raging. The wall's rattling. You don't know if the fucker's going to come undone, and y'all are just fucking ripping it up. It's, like, the best. Yeah, yeah, then you got the crowd screaming on top of oh, that. Oh, yeah, so, dude. I mean, anybody. I feel like I'm in an arena. You don't even have to ride a motorcycle. As long as you're in the bottom, you still feel like you're part of the band. It's, it's a thousand our, percent. It's our little American Coliseum. It, it did. Gladiator. That's yeah. why I'm like, I'm a fucking gladiator. Yeah. yeah. The way you walk in that thing, too, it's fucking all legit. Yeah. <laughs> Get some. Yep. Y'all going to let me in there this weekend? Absolutely. Yes! You want to come in? I mean, if I missed out last year, so fucking absolutely. Well, now you're getting I, I saw videos of him and Rafa fucking. Just <laughs> fucking going nuts. <laughs> yeah, selfie and you know, oh no, yeah. No, shows are just as good when it's just one eyes brother, but when you get two eyes brothers, you know that's tasty. Yeah, oh, that's fucking wow. delicious. Dude, I remember I was so sick here last year. You were. I was. You had the dying, runs all dude. weekend. <laughs> he said you had the runs. Too, too much chocolate milk, bro. Jeez, come <laughs> on, <laughs> you who's baby. <laughs> You should have went that quick. Yeah, for real. That's all I fucks with. Come on. Yeah. Give me that dairy, baby. That mama's milk. <laughs> so you're riding full, fully just sick as fuck. Oh, so fucking sick, dude. I don't know if you remember, like, the first show. I threw up all over myself. Like, as soon as it got done, I, I remember looking at, at Panama Red, Corey. He was announcing, and I said, dude, get me the fuck out of here. Yeah. And I made it two steps out of the door, and I just start. No way. Dude, lost it. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome for me. It was not awesome for yeah, Kyle. Oh, bro. I'm sure it was not. <laughs> yeah. No, I was I was struggling. I Where couldn't is Panama? breathe. And He's not here? He's in Nashville. Nashville. Oh, okay. Spreading, spreading some roots in Nashville somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Planting the seeds. A rolling stone no more. Okay. Nah, he's probably still Rolling Stone. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that dude. I, I, he yeah. is very missed, but Sad. if he gets back on the road, he gets back on the road. Yeah. You know? Same dude. I treat him like I treat my kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you whoop that ass? Or <laughs> <laughs> nah, like, you ain't got to do this. You know what I mean? But if you do, then I'm here. I fucking love that dude. Yeah. He's a good For time. Sure. For sure. Fucking, uh, what's the rest of the year look like? Obviously, y'all are doing Sturgis. Yeah, so, man, af right after here, we, we go to Milwaukee, and we, we start gearing up for the homecoming rally, uh, which is Harley-Davidson's 120th oh, yeah. anniversary. Um, and so we are actually very fortunate to be a part of the big celebration. We're set up right in front of the stage with the Foo Fighters and Green Day and Social Distortion, Joan Jett, like oh my God. all these heavy hitters. and uh, <laughs> No big deal, just everybody. Dude, we got <laughs> Nitro Circus is going to be there. Um, you let Pastrana on the wall? Wow. <laughs> Dude, so we just did a show with all of them uh, la uh, two weekends ago, uh, and none, uh, only one rider out of the whole show came over to, to play with it. And yeah? And he didn't do very good. But <laughs> as expected, you know, um, it's it's just different. You know, it's a different experience. Yeah. What make And without giving away the trade secret, but what makes it different? <sighs> We've been doing it for so long, we've already forgot. Okay, you that know? makes perfect sense. Yeah, because it's like it's hard for me to even teach people now because I'm just like, just do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just exactly. Fucking exactly. Get on the I'm wall. Like, I'm like, dude, it's simple. You just lean over, you give it some throttle, and then. I mean, and mostly it's all commitment. Nobody wants to learn anything hauling ass. And unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, you got to carry speed with the wall, you know. So when you go up there, a lot of people just they want to go. The goal is to ride the wall, but people want to go from the flat surface on the floor right to the wall, and it doesn't work that way. You still got to master the tracks and build your speed, get used to what you're looking at first, because before you know it, it with G-forces, you're starting to pass out because you forget to breathe. And right. You know, Damn, you so I never thought about that. It so looks hard much, as fuck. Oh, so much information your brain's processing mm -hmm. trying to do the yeah. wall of death that, you know, breathing is one of those important information that you forget to do sometimes. And every now and again, Kyle and I forget to do it because we're, <laughs> we're singing to the music or something while we're riding. Oh and the next God. thing you know, it's like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and then back into it. And then so... Dude, and I, then the side straddle, like riding side straddle, that shit that blows shit. my mind. It's fucking insane what you guys do. I would literally go around twice and just pass the fuck out. Be dizzy. I would just eat shit real beautifully, <laughs> yeah. real I mean, gracefully. If I, yeah, if I was able to do it, <laughs> let's say that, you know what I mean? But God damn, it looks so fucking difficult. I mean, after you do it, after 
for a while, then your vision just you kind of get used to it going away and coming back and stuff. Yeah. And you just got to ride through it. And and that's what a lot of beginners don't understand is they like I said they just want to go from the floor to the wall and then before you know it you're not carrying enough speed, which is why you're coming down and gravity, baby. Everybody wants to lean up too, so. <laughs> You know. Everybody wants to get to the top. Yeah. You know, touch the top of the ramp. Yeah. And I'm sure you just sit them down. You're like, check it out. So that one's the throttle. That's the shifter. And Newton's first law. What goes up must come down. Okay. <laughs> That's so right. if you, as long as you understand all that, yeah. go ahead, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one yeah. of our one of our buddies, Joey Robinson, uh, we were teaching him how to do the wall. We were all in Orlando and he went up, hit the cable, came right back down. He was like, <laughs> Once I went up, I didn't know how to come down. I was like, just <laughs> let off the throttle. <laughs> 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 Fuck that. I, he told me that he rode the fucking wall, but he, I didn't know that, that, he that he that's what it, happened. He rode it a few times. Times. Yeah, it took a little while. Everybody gets up, wobbles around, comes back down, and then he just like got got up, started wobbling. But instead of going down, he just kept climbing. And he's like, "How do I get down?" <laughs> right. Love Joey. Have That's you uh, seen some? I mean, obviously, has anybody crashed? Because I mean, you guys are fucking straight professionals. Oh yeah. Has. Oh yes. Next like that would be fucking gnarly to see. Yeah. Next day, uh, our next de- uh, person that went up after Joey uh, was Gabe Reckless Two Hundred Three, and yeah. he crashed, broke his ankle. Oh, oh God! Snapped it, just sliding down the wall and had his weight on his foot. And then as he was sliding down the, the tra- tracks, it just folded the ankle uh, the other way. Yeah. Oh, my butthole just got this yeah. tight, yeah. bro. God, and man. he handled it better than that. Yeah, like for real. He, he just, just looked up at me and he's like, "Dude, broke. I snapped my ankle." I was like, "No, you didn't." And I looked down and I looked at his ankle and I was like, "Oh, goddamn, you just snapped <laughs> your ankle." <laughs> yeah, oh, a, a guy. That's yeah, I couldn't even broken. look at him yeah. anymore. Dude. He's probably broken a thousand bones yeah. before, so he's like, eh, "I know what that feels like." Yeah, oh. just and he's chill a as shit. Brad, motherfucker on a motorcycle dude. too. Oh, so. he's wicked. And he yeah. crashed the same way everybody crashes. He just that one wrong wrong way. Is right. what he didn't drink enough ankle. milk. Yeah. <laughs> See, he should have upset dude. tummy. Yeah. Way better than a broken ankle. Yep. Yep. Gabe, you need to drink more milk, bro. More milk. Leche. Mm. De hombre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, fuck. I had, I, I, I was thinking of something. I'm, it's gone. Oh, Wing. You still riding the wall during the show? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I like to play. Let's hear about it. Go around in circles. <laughs> vertical board wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We have to tell people to hold their fireworks now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. we're like, you know, ever, keep the ever snakes since and the sparklers begin- down. Yeah, ever since the beginning of Harley Davidson, you know, it's always be Harley or Indian, and you know, the wall of death. It was always vice versa too. So now we put an Indian on a Honda. Come on, come on, <laughs> people! <laughs> groundbreaking news. Yes. Kicking wing actually almost burned the wall down. Nice. Let's hear about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, we agreed that we we wouldn't talk about Cincinnati. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> we don't talk about Nasty Natty anymore? No. Nah. I want it either. I, I do have to give away the trade secret. Okay. The trade secret's right in the wall of death. We have sticky stuff on the tires. <laughs> well, <laughs> got it. And the magnets. And and big magnets behind the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, wow. This is all an illusion. Those mm-hmm. must be really big fucking magnets. Yeah. That and the lead paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the lead paint's only at the top. Yeah. yeah. Only on the ring. Yeah. yeah. Mostly right. where you grip and hold on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So you got Milwaukee, Sturgis. What's the rest of the summer look like? Man, we got Kansas, Ohio, Colorado, Colorado. Yeah, Yeah. Four Corners. Durango be fun. Texas. Oh, all right. So Four Corners will be there. I think we hit Oklahoma again. Um, The Trail of Tears. And then we start making our way back east, dude. And uh, yeah, we so many shows. I don't even know. You just wait for the email to come through. Like, okay, put that in the fucking navigation. Yeah, exactly. So this is what you guys do permanently. All the time, one hundred percent. Yeah, this is this is it. If we're not if we're not out on the road, then we're we're not making money. Right. So your yeah. kids come with you all year long, or I wish. Mm-hmm. Um, no, we get them heavy in the summer, um, and then uh, um, when we're home, we get them every other weekend. Or yeah, he does with his kids, and then I go up to Ohio and see mine once a month and, Got and hang out with him, and then. Yeah, during the summertime, he comes out with me, and then during the winter time, we switch off holidays. And got it. You got a girl pregnant in Ohio? Yeah. Damn, didn't see that. That's coming. Why we don't talk about <laughs> Cincinnati? Come yeah. on, now. we can talk now. about Cleveland all now day, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. isn't Red from Nat- Natty? No, he's from, Cleveland. from Cleveland. He's from Cleveland. The yeah. mistake on the lake. Yeah, yeah. come on, baby. My, yeah. s- my son's in uh, Columbus, so it's not too far. Every time I go up there, I bolt up to Cleveland and go eat at our buddy's uh, pizza place, Vero Pizza, and. 
and uh, hang out with the boys. And that is the best of Ohio right there. That, that is that is all best. Ohio really has to offer. Yeah. 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 And, the, and then the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Football Hall of Fame. Yep. That's in Canton yeah. and fucking in Akron. In Akron, yeah. Yeah. The rest of it sucks. Yeah. God, and it's polluted yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> Real estate prices are great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Dude, so what is, I, I want to circle back a little bit. So what does a crash look like when you're in the fucking wall? Like Gabe goes down, can he smoke ever like the bike's thrashing to the ground? You can get smoked. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean the like you said, what goes up comes down. So mm-hmm. if you're if you're sliding down without the bike, then that means the bike's coming back around and getting you. So <sighs> mm. So it is kind of like NASCAR, though. You know, like everything wants to go to the outside of the track, not so much the middle of the track. Right. Sometimes but, it ties in. Sometimes. <laughs> but sometimes. Right. There is that sometimes you bounce off the outer wall and bring it right through the infield. <laughs> you know, if, if only that had happened to Senior. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> fucking. I cried. Hey, me too. <laughs> I'm, fucking, I'm I not even kidding. I throw up threes, dude. <laughs> I, I, so I had the FXR last year. I'm sure I told you about it because I was real proud of it. Yeah. Tore it down to the frame. Never touched it again. Never ran again. Never ran Never again. sold it. I <laughs> traded it for a 99 F350 that is currently not running. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But it's a diesel stick shift. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to do a fucking uh, Intimidator paint scheme on it. That would be sick. If we fucking ran. That would be sick. We know uh, we have a friend, actually. Oh, that's Dale Jr., though, isn't it? She's got an El Camino, dude, that's oh, just yeah. full on... Dale Jr., number eight. Ate it up. Eight. Oh, yeah, wow. dude. So I, I grew up in Southern Virginia in Richmond International. I would go up there and work and sell hot chocolate. That's and it. my number one line is, I wanted to sell beer, but they gave me hot chocolate, and I'd have every redneck in fucking earshot buying hot chocolate from me. That's amazing. And then my aunts go to both races, and then they also go, they I think they go to Talladega, and they go to Daytona most of the time. They're fucking upset. Sunday's or football and holiday. fucking NASCAR. Yeah. It's a holiday. Yeah. yeah. Growing up as kids, my dad used to watch watch uh nascar all the time and it wasn't until we started uh working with nascar in like 2017 with monster that we kind of got like the whole perspective of it and got to go in like the infields got to go on the the side of the tracks watch them work on the cars and tune that's the, the game changer that's 100 percent. then the day before watching them do time trials to where they're going to figure out where they're at on the poles yep. that's the racing right there yep it's not. It, be, it no longer becomes four left turns. Now yeah. you're like, oh fuck, oh my this gosh. is real. These big ass ice generator coolers that would cool the cars down like hundred degrees in seconds. Just, just sitting in front of it. All it is is two nozzles. They just hook one hose up, hook the other hose up, and boom, cars cooling down immediately. Fucking. So wow. they can start tuning on it, working on it, and everything like the that. The amount of money that goes into that shit is, is crazy, ridiculous. It is really insane. <laughs> but the fucking the lower levels, like not Sprint or Nextel Cup, but the. Like, the guys who are trying to get sponsors, those fucking dudes, you got to hand it to them. They're the racers. Dudes, for yeah. sure. They're yeah. loading it on the trailer every night and fucking mm. buying parts from fucking AutoZone to make it work and shit. I love that. I love yeah. a good fucking underdog story. Yeah, yeah. nothing to lose, something to win. And we're yeah. from South yeah. Georgia, so it's all dirt roundy round track down there, and they take that shit serious down there. What are the, the dirt cars that have the fucking gnarly spoiler that's angled up? The big wings. Um, the, are they, they're spri- not sprint cars. They're... Uh, it's a it's a straight dirt track, but it's like sh- cut down, and then they have a gnarly fucking foil that keeps them grounded. Yeah, and we we did one of the races in uh in Charlotte. Um, it is it's outlaw it's outlaw sprint. sprint yeah? Cars, yeah. Oh, that shit's fucking awesome. Yeah. So y'all are from South Georgia. What's the deal with where where do y'all stand on the Florida Georgia line thing? Well, we're originally from Florida, but we're transplants in Georgia now. We live got in South it. Georgia. We yeah, got we're tired. Only exit eighteen into Georgia. We're not far. Yeah. So we are on the Florida Georgia line. Okay, so w- what's the beef? Is there beef, or is uh, it all love? They both suck. They yeah. both suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Dude, well, I mean, y'all live on acreage, though, it is right? So yeah. hot and humid in both of them, it doesn't really matter. It's that is miserable. I don't miss that part of the East Coast. I yeah. mean, we got mosquitoes down there that stand flat-footed hunt buzzards. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they'll fly away with your kid. You, you better, <laughs> you better get bugs, keep them grounded. Humidity. Yeah. We got property, but we also got bugs and humidity and yeah. snakes and gators and... Racism. So. and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, dude, racism. I mean, I guess it's it's everywhere, but I feel like it's... I don't know. I guess maybe we just don't hang around Long enough. around it enough, you yeah. know, or whatever I mean. But, like, uh, everybody down there is the same, you know. Like, we well, all it's alive and thriving in California, same. too. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say, it's pretty much everywhere. It doesn't yeah. matter yeah. where you go. I mean, there's and it doesn't matter San who you Diego. Are. <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. I feel like people, though, uh, they're really good living together down there. Yeah. You know, where we're at, there's, man, yeah. Every 
everybody hates everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know? It all sucks. It's so humid yeah. out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? exactly. It, we're just all trying to survive. For yeah. sure. Fucking A, dog. I, I feel you like have, we really. You have gators? Yeah. On your oh, yeah. property? Yeah, yeah like, me and like Cody have caught gators and put them in our leg just to keep the snakes down. Really? Yeah. What the fuck? No, yeah. How many acres do you guys own? So my mom and dad have 25 acres, and then I own five acres down the road at the end of the house. So when we first started, uh, when we first moved to Georgia, my parents started with the original 20 acres. Right. And then we had a couple neighbors next to us, and every time they'd sell a house or bitch at us for riding, my parents would buy the house. So nice. Now nice. We, now we have all the houses on the dirt road. So you guys have a full-on compound. B- borderline, yeah. yeah. That's fucking yeah, rad. What, four houses uh Four houses now on the 25 acres, and then... A couple trailers. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, and then I had the house down the road. That's and then they right also out. have a barn that has all their bikes in it. Yeah, so yeah, our little, our little town got a couple barns, uh, actually, that really? have a bunch of bikes in them, yeah. <sighs> wow. I saw uh, on somebody's Instagram, it was probably yours or something, but did your grandpa pass away this year? Yeah, yeah. so our grandfather passed away March 30th. It was a pretty, pretty big deal for you guys, huh? That was heavy. That's yeah. like the heaviest uh, passing that I've Yeah, so I I've took a little, a little time away from riding. For and, sure. And uh, as I was, like, fighting for my son and doing all that kind of stuff, I uh, wasn't making enough ri- money riding motorcycles, so I had to get two jobs. And what shows I couldn't do, I was helping a family restaurant down in Sarasota. And, and uh, so I lived with him for a little while and mm-hmm. got to get even closer with him. But, like, our whole lives – our grandfather was always there and uh, right. a part of everything. If we ever yeah. crashed a motorcycle, needed a new motorcycle, he'd buy us a new motorcycle just because he didn't want us on that one that we crashed on. Wow. So he wanted to make sure that it wasn't a mechanical failure or whatever that caused us to get hurt. And right. we had a new motorcycle. He was, so he was the financial backing of he was our whole always program, for sure. Hands on. Hey and me and our grandmother, you know. Yeah. And yeah. So whatever shows they could get to, they they traveled and. and Came. When and I when I see stuff like that, because I was such my grandparents were everything to me. Same. So whenever I see stuff like that, it just fucking gets me. You know what yeah. I mean? And then I immediately just start thinking of yeah. You know our, I mean? grand, our grandpa was our best friend. Right. And, Fuck. Uh, what yeah. was crazy too is uh, he waited for Cody and I because we yeah. were gone. So when we and did that, f- yeah, when we did that Phoenix before bike rally, um, he'd suffer with dementia too. So it was it was hard to watch him be somebody and then him just slowly start to lose his his memory and it was kind of weird because sometimes he it would bounce back and it'd it was be almost like, like he was playing with you it, yeah right because for some reason it'd be like he forget everything and then all of a sudden just bring up some crazy shit that you said like two days ago and it'd be like how right. did you remember that it was almost like he was fucking with you <laughs> and so he got put in the hospital as we were on our way to arizona <laughs> well actually while i was here last year he had a stroke oh yeah. fuck yeah and that's what kind of started the the whole down spiral, but right. when he's in the hospital, he'd never leave the hospital. He'd never eat again. He'd never do this. He'd never walk again uh, at his age with dementia and stuff. And he left the hospital. He Just middle worked fingers it. up. He, yeah, yeah, he worked his way to to walking again. He started eating whole foods again, to where they took the the feeding tube out. And it was once they took the feeding tube out, that was I think his time to be like, all right, I'm done, right. and uh, I don't want to do this no more. He never liked the feeding tube f- from the beginning. But he was always a hard-working man. You know, he just mm. he's old-school British. So if you stopped working, you're gonna die. Mm. And he just never stopped working. And he even after he got sick, had his stroke, and uh, and the dementia, he just fought his ass off. And then finally, he got to a point where he was just like, "I'm done." And he got put in the hospital uh, after his surgery when they they took the feeding tube out. And then he just stopped refusing to eat. And then they put him on hospice bed rest and gave him a few days and said he put. In Probably wouldn't last 24 hours. And then Kyle and I rushed from Arizona, rushed home. Um, got yeah. to spend one night. God, it's oh fucking God. me I up got, right now, dude. Yeah. I know, I'm starting I know, to get emotional, when, too. When I, when I read their post, it was really fucking, like, it hit me fucking hard. You I got to I mean? lay in bed with him one last time. Oh. Hold his hand. Dude. Yeah. Oh, that happened. Yeah. To that. So my mom passed in 2017 from cancer, and she got it. And then a year later, like, she had done all the chemo and all the shit. And I just got this phone call in January, end of January, and she was like, you need to come home. And I was like, what's up? I was just home for Christmas. She's like, nope. I'm done doing this shit. God's calling me home. Get here. And she was fucking gone in fucking like three days, dude. Yep. And yeah. fucking. It was, oh. it was crazy. I was like yeah. in bed with him. Kyle taking the kids back home. My sister. Um, I think she was out in the living room. So she gave me like my time with him. And he just patted my hand. Right. Told me to leave. Yeah. My grandma did the same thing too. 
I'll probably fucking start crying the first time on the podcast. But God damn, we uh, I actually lied to her because she would not go until I said my our daughter was here. You know, so I said to her, I whispered in her ear, you know, Grandma Madison's here. And she couldn't open her eyes or anything like that. Within two hours, she died. But I, she would not go. It was like heavy breathing, same thing, dementia. Yeah. It's like the worst mm-hmm. thing to see, you yeah. know, too. How, how old was your grandfather when he passed? 86. Ah, what a fucking what a living a Fucking dream, legend, though. dude. Yeah. dude <laughs> he had such a good life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he. Watching you guys, he, please. Man, just. He was who taught me how to be a man. You know what I mean? And he's like, if. if and that's my goal today. If I can be half the man my grandfather was, then. I'm probably be, gonna be, be really blessed, man. Yeah. You know, fuck. Yeah. That, that's he what I was the best, dude. He wor- he worshipped the ground that my grandma walked on. Mm. Um, that's right. Everything Good. for right. you know, he go and get his you know, gallbladder removed. He'd be coming back home when they're like, "You need to be bed rest." He'd be get, bringing my grandma tea <laughs> uh, while she's laying in bed sick or something. So he just always was, always cared more about you than he did himself. He always put you, f- you know, even a stranger, he put you first. <laughs> was and he in the showbiz too? No, he was uh, just a hard-working man. He, was he built the hospital we both were born in. Damn. Yeah, he, he, uh, my grandma was a nurse, and he used to do all the maintenance and stuff in the ho- in Sarasota Memorial Hospital. And uh, both my brother and I and my sister were bo- born in that hospital. And He was a contractor that, that you know, yeah. did so much at the hospital, they just ended up hi- hiring him as, like, a nice. full-time maintenance man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, just stick around, man. We're, we're going to need yeah. you eventually. Yeah, yeah. You're one smart guy, so just yeah. l- help, help us you out. You know where everything's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you already got it down, Pat. God. Yeah. Fuck. I didn't know that's where we were going with this, yeah, Dustin. I know. Uh, well, got I, heavy. I, know. I, I didn't. I didn't really want to do that, but I just I had to say it, man, because it was like that. It was such a touching fucking post. You know right. what I mean? So, so there was a couple things that were that were really awesome that we got to do. We got to do uh, um, the release of the new Harley Davidson Nightster, um, mm. and Pops got to play a part in that. Uh, he's in the video, and he was there to be a part of all of it you know for the filming and everything and throughout the whole time we were filming he asked a thousand questions because he had no idea what was going on wanted to know why all these semi-truck trailers are inside the are at our house and <laughs> why are all these cameras everywhere are we now filming tv shows or like you know he was, <laughs> so, he was so confused yeah. on what was going on but at the same time he's just like I don't know. He still walked around so proud and just like cool as shit to everybody, making sure everybody that was there being a part of the shoot was comfortable and they had everything that they needed. And um, just asking the grips, hey, y'all good? Yeah, yeah one exactly. Of our, one of our dude, really like, good buddies catered the whole event with his steakhouse. And, uh, hell yeah. And so breakfast, lunch, and then we go to the, the restaurant at night. Uh, after it was closed, he'd open it up and feed everybody. And Damn. And yeah, so during the day, Pops would just sit over there and his. With his shade hat, and smoke just watch your sweet. <laughs> <laughs> what a ledge! Yeah, Did he maintain his British yeah. accent? No, he kind of lost it over the years. There's some words he'd say that you know, like, but it was only when um, because Grandpa was a triplet, and so they're originally from Wales. And got it. I don't know how the story really works out, but my grandma's got the note, and it was uh, from the king and queen at the time of. Uh, my grandpa being like one of the very first triplets ever successfully delivered, and the king sent my pops a note, uh, or my great grandfather a note of like job well done. This is how much, you know, how much you wow. earned, and uh, so yeah, my grandpa was uh, one of the triplets, and one of the first every triplets time, in uh, every time his sisters and my cousins and all that they would come over. After about, you know, right before they leave, he'd start to kind of slowly pick up. Yeah. I mean, shit, even we would. Yeah. Uh, right. They have such a strong accent over there. Right. so They really do. Yeah. The I Welsh love, especially. Yeah, dude. I love when they come over and get to listen to them talk. I can right, dude. Cousin Evie and all them. I, I love accents in general, whether it's Philadelphia, New England, fucking the Welsh, fucking yeah. anything but the French. Don't fuck with the French. <laughs> All right. French Canadians. Not yeah. even fucking <laughs> remotely close. Yeah. Back to back World War champs. Don't fucking forget. Okay. <laughs> June fourth, yeah. Omaha Beach. Sheesh. Mm. All right. Oh, I got that out of the yeah, way. Calm down, there, Rocky. <laughs> yeah. I only know how to say one one phrase in French, and it's a real good one. Prendre un douche avec moi. You want to take a shower with me? Sounds like <laughs> German. Sounds a German. I know German too. Eins, zwei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun. Bier, bitte. 
I'd be about that. <laughs> I just counted to ten and said, "Give me a beer, please." Yeah, <laughs> all <right. laughs> that's all you really need to know. Jeez. So, who's commentating this weekend shows, boys? I need to know. So that'll be me and Kick. We yeah. kind of we do we pass the mic back and forth and kind of bullshit with each other and, uh, um, yeah, you know we make it happen. That's right. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, I am excited. I mean, to see both of them right, that's gonna be fucking badass. I've only I've only got to see them both ride once, and that was two years ago. So I'm fired up oh, to yeah. have you back out here. I didn't recognize you. Like, I know I've said this three times, but goddamn, bro, you fucking tartened up, looking good, stud. <laughs> The long hair, definitely throwing it out. Long hair the hippie locks. Yeah. Kyle keeps saying I gain weight, but I think it's because he's gaining weight. So Kyle, I didn't want to say it, but you and I have definitely tacked on some LBs this year. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are silly. Some, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> some fucking haters over here, dog. For real, <laughs> dude. I'm so young, tight, and athletic. <laughs> two big houses over here oh talking God. shit. Come on. <laughs> well, boys, I think this is a good place to wrap. I'm going to give you all an opportunity to air some shit out if you need to. Yeah, no, we're, thank you for having us again. Uh, we love San Diego. We love California. We love being here. Um, thank you to Josh Card for having us out here at San Diego Harley-Davidson. For sure. Um, we love we're going to have a badass weekend this weekend. Um, shout out to all of our sponsors, Harley-Davidson, uh, Bell Helmets, Maximo Racing Oil, mm-hmm. Zeus Bikes, Dixon, uh, ODI Handlebars. Um, all those dudes make it a lot easier for us to be able to do what we're doing. And so we're super thankful for all of them to be on our team. And, uh, the spectators, you know, just super thankful for everybody that shows up and shows out. So That's right. Yeah, if it wasn't for you guys, all we you wouldn't guys. be able to do this. Straight the fuck up. Wing? Oh, uh, yeah, come on, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Got snakes Man. and sparklers for sale. Come <laughs> on, <laughs> whim wham zoodads, with or without the whistler stick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mean to tell me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You ain't got no whim whams. Oh Some whistling bungholes. <laughs> <laughs> With or without the scooter it's stick. Any <laughs> single looking to mingle, you know? Hey, hey we hey, can hey, make that little, happen. Oh, come on, sure. Come on, girls. Please. He's got a war cry. Hey, I'm doing fucking <laughs> disco tonight. I've got you guys on the House list. Of blues. Plus eight. I'll put you center stage and be like, who wants to fucking molest this man tonight? Oh, it's a wrap. You're going you're gonna to get Bro, tons of plus. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's a What ridic- time is that? Uh, 10 p.m. is when the show starts. Show up at 9. There'll be free drinks. All right. And I don't drink, so that means more for y'all. Yeah, <laughs> Neither do we. yeah we yeah. don't drink either. Y'all don't drink either? No. Uh-huh. Oh, damn. Really? Yeah. Cool. We'll just chug Red Bulls all night. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Come on. I'll all be right, up there with the water in the booth. Come on. <laughs> you can smoke as much as you want to. That is an option. That's all I really care about. And you're in California, baby. Do as the do as the Romans do, right? That's Wall of death by day, chimney at night. Come on. <laughs> let's go. Classic. It's been another episode of the LFG 19 Abortion Show. Bing bong. <laughs>